Hey everyone, still recording on the day that my internet uh, got shut down. Uh, hopefully this doesn't last more than a day, but it is what it is. But I have mail to open, so it's not too bad. There are five on-topic ones and one off-topic one. Let's get started. I'm going to start with this one here because I'm curious to see if they'll fit my PCB designs. Uh, so then I can order them. Uh, June 19th ordered, July 5 arrived, $31.68. And it says here, hot plug socket, 110 pieces. I'm going to try to cut this carefully because I don't know how they're packaged. It seems to be packaged fairly well. They're very well packaged. Jeez. So there should be uh, 220 pieces here, 110 times 2. Fairly common in the mechanical keyboard world, these things. Um, I'll have to count them all up. But basically, these are uh, hot swap sockets so that you don't have to use uh, key switches only once so you know it's really made to be soldered onto a PCB and then you can slot a you know mechanical keyboard switch into it and then if you need to change or if you want to change to a different pressure key switch then you can just pop it out and pop a new one back in but um, I bought these because the key switches are more expensive than these things it was you know under 30 bucks or around 30 bucks for um, a whole bunch of them, the 220 of them. So let's see if they fit a key switch. So this is a Utemu red switch. Um, it's a linear switch that so does not click uh, and it has a light pressure. The black ones and the purple ones are higher pressure than these. And basically it has little prongs as you can see. And this should just about line up like this. It should go in with uh, reasonable pressure. Just don't want to poke it through and get my finger. There we go. That fits just perfectly. So yeah, this solders onto the back of the PCB and then you can slot in your key switch and there you go and then if you want to make changes you basically um, these switches clamp on with these little uh, hooks on the side here they're called uh, they're, they're, they're like a case mount see the little hooks there the one-way hooks you press those in on both sides and then you pop it out of the frame which pops them out of these hot swap um, sockets so yeah it should be pretty neat I should be able to hand solder these things they're not actually that small uh, like a, probably a 12 something, uh, 1206 resistor. It's about the same size as that pad. But what you do is you make the pad slightly bigger so that you can get your iron on beside. And yeah, you solder these things in and then you can either change the type of switch you're using or in my case, reuse the same switch for multiple projects um, long after you shelf them. When you're, you know, when you want to play with them again, you just pop the switches back in and there you go. Just something I was uh, thinking of. And also, I do want to eventually build custom keyboards. So yeah, this might be very useful for that. Next one up is this one here. This one was June 19th to July 7th, $15 and one cent. Apparently I don't know how bags work. Oh, already, huh? Well, this is great timing. Uh, so I just showed you guys the sockets I got for uh, key switches. But of course, some of you are just not going to be into uh, mechanical keyboard keys. So there's got to be an alternative for people like you. And I completely understand because, you know, I don't really want to spend money on every single one of my projects. So what I have here is an alternative. So this is a tactile dome version 
of a key switch and I'm planning on using these uh, actually I'm gonna see if I can make this a dual footprint so there we go hopefully I'll be able to use the same footprint for the Utemu um, reds that I just showed you and for these things so it'll be your choice you can order this exact same PCB you can either populate it with uh, cheaper switches like this or more expensive switches uh, like you've just seen. And what I like about these kinds of switches is that the caps come off and you can actually label or slide a piece of paper underneath there and write a label for what these switches do. So when you make macro pads, this is ideal. I don't think I would ever use a keyboard that used these switches, but a macro pad, that should be just fine. I've got a ton here. I believe there's 50 in here. Uh, and with their associated caps and they weren't that expensive, it was, you know, 15 bucks. So yeah, this is just like the upgraded version of those little five millimeter square um, tactile domes. Next one up, we've got this guy here. June 19th to July 7th, $15.70. Oh, sweet. So these here are connectors usually used in RC cars. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of connectors for RC cars and you're probably familiar with this style here. This is called an XT60, male and female, and they work really well. You get these in, you know, lithium polymer batteries and whatever. But when you need to move more current, you need to move up from the four millimeter bananas that are internal to those up into these guys which I believe are a six millimeter banana so these are much higher uh, current capacity there we go male and female and these are XT 90s and I think the XT 60 has like a maximum of 60 current uh, 60 amps of current continuous I think the XT 90 is supposed to have 90 amps of current continuous or is that peak I never remember so I got a whole bunch uh, and these here are interesting because they don't need any uh, heat shrink. They just have these uh, clip-on sort of uh, strain relief type of things. These are actually the legit ones from Amass uh, AMASS uh, on AliExpress however. Hopefully they're decent quality. They're not waterproof or anything like that um, but I do plan on uh, driving some current through these and actually if you guys feel interested I can do a voltage drop test on XT60s versus XT90s and we can see which ones drop less voltage so basically have less losses but I think these are very uh, high quality connectors in general and I don't think there will be very much voltage loss at all but I mean we can test it let me know if you want me to test them totally not editor Dan from the future here uh, reshooting this because the footage got deleted of course not how could that be um, this was ordered June 19th arrived July 4th $31.93 but that's uh, $2.60 plus 2104 plus the shipping so that gives you about an idea of what's in here and let's just uh, cut this bag open oh yeah open Ooh, what a surprise oh my god Oh, and some of these. Great, let's take a closer look at these. Well, these are MC4 connector uh, fuse holders. Now, they're supposed to be waterproof, um, although that is debatable um, because they have these O-rings here on them, but they don't have much squish to them. Uh, but anyways, when I ordered these, uh, these came without the fuses in them. So there's four, uh, but they do include the fuses. And then when I ordered the fuses on the side, I thought each order of them was two fuses, but it seems like one fuse each. So they, they're kind of expensive, these fuses, but they're kind of fancy too, because they're like, um, you know, the ones with the sort of ceramic outside. And I think they are filled with um, sand, although I'm not sure about that. It says a hundred, a thousand volts DC, I mean, I don't know how valid those claims are, but these holders do look pretty cool. As you can see, they have kind of a large contact area, and I feel like there's not going to be a lot of uh, voltage drop there, 
And if I just put it up to the tube, it looks like the tube is pretty much the perfect length for these fuses. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, the little O-ring just sits on this little taper here, which doesn't seem super clean. I think a little bit of grease is required on these O-rings, but after that, I think it would be uh, watertight. Now, the thing that is um, cool about this is you can do a gender change because there's no difference whether you install it like this or like this. You can actually install two male ends or two female ends to swap the direction uh, of the, uh, the swap the gender of these plugs. So that's that's a good thing because it's versatile, but it's also not a good thing if you don't keep track of your genders because MC4s can be connected in any direction. Sometimes it's confusing when you have like a load side connection versus a panel side connection. So be careful of that. I'm going to be doing some tests on these because you need to fuse your solar system, uh, solar power system on both ends um, as per uh, Scott the Death Palm on his podcast appearance. Um, so I'm going to be using these. Hopefully they're waterproof, but I'll be using, you know, one on the inside here and one on the outside, you know, over the panel is. And I'll probably swat, you know, one on the positive side, one on the negative side, although it doesn't really matter. So that means I have everything necessary to make my, uh, you know, home small solar setup video. Hopefully you guys are excited for that. Now back to the past when I actually hit the record button. And now the last on-topic item, uh, June 10th to June 20th, $23.66. I hope they're not switches again, unless you guys love switches. Oh my god, what the hell? Oh yeah! Jeez, it has been, you know, over two weeks. So maybe you guys remember all the USB-C cables I have ordered from the company Pizzas. Well. The other day I was tracking down a um, micro USB and I just couldn't find a decent quality one. You know, half the time they won't program and... Anyway, I, I'm done. I was done asking. So I do know that this Pizzas company makes some good uh, cables. And so I went and I ordered a whole bunch of micro USB ones. Now I've got some really short ones. These black ones, they are... I'm actually not sure how long they are. Let's see, but I do have three sizes. So the way it works on AliExpress is you just like increase the amount of items that you want and it increases the shipping uh, commensurately. Um, but the weird thing is that if you order too many of a single item, the shipping goes up quite high. But if you order the same amount, but of three different items, the shipping doesn't increase in the same amount. So it's weird. But anyways, I've got, um, three of these shorter ones. They are 28 centimeters, so just under a foot. So those. I've got these blue ones, which should be, I think they are half a meter. I think they're about a foot and a half. Yeah, about a, about a foot and a half. And I've got these guys, which should be three feet and red. So I got tired of crappy USB cables. I'll probably be ending up throwing away all the bad ones. Yeah, that one's definitely three feet. Uh, and just using these from now on, I was so impressed with the USB-C stuff that I think these should be fine. Um, so, I mean, if you want me to test these things, I can go round up all the micro USBs I have in the house and show you why I needed these. If you think you'd watch that video, let me know because this it's not something that takes a lot of effort to do. I, and I do have the tools to do it. So let me know. In the meantime, though, uh, I'm probably going to be really happy with these things. Hopefully they're just as good as the USB-Cs that I bought. And the last item, uh, albeit it is off topic, skip to, you know, the next chapter if you don't care for off topic things. These are um, kayak leashes. 
These are one of those products where if you need it, it costs you a shit ton to get them locally. They're just basically a like a springy uh, rope cable thing with a little uh, clip and a little loop on the other side. And the point of these is when you go kayaking, you should really secure your paddle, your fishing rod, all those things to your kayak so that you don't drop it in the water, especially your 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 um, your paddle, because you're going to need that to go retrieve the other items you dropped, um, and you know stuff like your fishing rod that doesn't float. So basically, all you all you do really is uh, let's say my arm is the paddle here, you just kind of loop this through like this. So then my the paddle is kind of stuck there, and then this you're going to clip to any of the utility hook spots on your kayak and you're able to use it because it has this flexibility. And that's all, you do the same thing for your fishing rods and everything. Um, so, so this was uh, 20 bucks for six of them, and I didn't need six, but if I, I need four really. So one for me, one for my wife uh, for their paddles, and then one for me, one for my wife for like something we're carrying with us, fishing rod, tackle box, uh, waterproof bag, whatever. But if I wanted four, it would have been $18. If I wanted six, it would have been $20. So I got six. It's kind of those things where you got to hedge your bets. Plus, I mean, if I go fishing, maybe I want to bring a fishing net or a battery or something, you know, so I've hedged my bets. But these things, again, uh, anytime you go boating or something, it's always good to leash your things to the boat. Um, so here it is. The usual thing people say to do is to go to the dollar store and get a, a dog leash. Our dollar store only has $4 dog leashes and they're super thick like braided rope things that would be terrible to use for a paddle leash. So that's why I got these. And so that's it. Um, I'm going to have to go online and uh, see if I actually ordered or received the, what I ordered on uh, these things. Um, but I, and I hope I did, but I'm going to have to wait for the internet to come back before I do that. Uh, but thank you again for, to my Patreon patrons who kind of supply the funds to do this kind of thing. Um, I'm actually curious to see if you guys are interested in voltage drop testing of, uh, these cables, of these connectors. I even have some different connectors which uh, I thought I was going to switch to for a while, which is these EC3s. So the thing is, these are three millimeter bananas. Uh, these are four millimeter bananas. And these are six millimeter bananas. So be interested to see the maximum of each, but I'm going to have to get creative in order to pull a high amount of current um, because I don't really have anything that can supply more than 24 amps reliably, or do I? Thanks for watching.